What's going on guys? How we doing? It's uh, New Year's Eve right now. Uh, filming a little video today. Heading over to my dad's place to uh, cook up some sushi from the Fish From Last video. Show a little clip right now just so you guys can see what we did there. Um, but first, before we head out to my dad's to cook out there, um, we are going to stop off at Branches, uh, Long Island, Samantha Morales. Uh, we got fish in the back. Caught a lot of fish last trip, too much to even fit in my freezer. Um, so we're going to go out there, we're going to donate some fish to some needy families. Uh, we'll pick back up with you guys out there. Um, as always guys, like, share, subscribe, do what you got to do. Love you guys. Stay happy, stay healthy. Happy New Year. We'll pick back up when we're uh, dropping off the fish. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, we're at Branches. About to drop off the fish that I got in here. I uh, don't know how they feel about filming in there. So uh, gonna run in there, do a little drop all the fish, and then head over to my dad. But guys, this uh, donation center is always in need. If you guys have anything that you can donate to the donation center, look them up online. On Facebook, it's Branches, Long Island. Uh, Samantha Morales runs things. Uh, this is what we got going on. Got the cooler right here. Ignore the mess in my in my back of my car, fisherman's fisherman's car. But we're packed out with fish and porgies and sea bass and fluke in there. All right, guys. See you in a little bit. All right, guys. We just finished up at Branches. They were really appreciative of the uh, fish we brought in. They still are in need of a ton of stuff, so. Guys, if you have any kind of surplus of, of food that is non-perishable um, or is a long expiration date on it, think of branches. They definitely need stuff. Um, and if you need a, a link up, just hit me up, guys. I'll give you the contact information. Thanks, guys. All right, ladies and gents, what do we got going on today? Well, we're at my uh, parents' place. They got a beautiful kitchen, so I, I opted to use this. Uh, we're gonna make a little sushi today. Uh, got some organic California sushi rice, got from H Mart. Got uh, some sea bass, been frozen for a couple days. Porgy. Uh, got all the accoutrement over there, you know, panko, wasabi, sesame oil, uh, rice wine vinegar, um, well, not uh, wine vinegar, but rice vinegar, some sriracha mayo, some um, shoyu. That's special stuff you can only get at um, H Mart. And then we got the uh, the unagi sauce, the eel sauce. You drizzle over the top of the um, the fish, the rolls. Once you once you make it, uh, we got some mangoes, we got some avocados, some chives, some seaweed salad. It's gonna be good today, guys. So uh, stay tuned. We're we'll getting the cooking, and uh, we'll show you how do we make sushi with Chef Pookie-san. All right, guys. So one of the most important things about making sushi is obviously the rice. So um, you know, you go to your supermarket, you get anything that uh, says sushi rice on it. It has to be short grain, and it has to be very starchy rice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out two cups here of rice. Um, and we'll get into what goes into making sushi rice here in a second. All right, guys, we got two cups of uh, sushi rice here. Um, now, the most important thing about sushi rice is washing it. What we're going to do is we're going to throw all of our sushi rice into the pot, as you can see there. And we're just going to turn on the, uh, the cold water. And you're going to see right now when we put this in the cold water, it's going to look kind of milky when we put the cold water on there. Let's redo this. I'm gonna put more rice in there. All right guys, so you can see here, the water in here, it's kind of milky. What you wanna do is, you wanna agitate your rice for a while. Just run your hands along it. See how milky it is? You don't want that. You want your water to be nice and clear. So, gonna run the water. We're basically washing the rice. We're washing the starch off the rice. You want your rice to be nice and clean. You want this water to not be milky. So this is gonna take a while. And uh, probably takes about 10 minutes agitating the rice. And then once uh, we agitate the rice for a long enough time, 
we'll uh, pick back up where we will uh, drain the rice and then we'll put in the proper measurements of water to cook the rice and we'll show you how to cook the rice from there. All right, guys. Every once in a while, you drain all that water off, get some nice fresh water in there to start washing. If you lose a little bit of rice, don't worry about it. Now one thing you, you want to realize here is when you're washing your rice, you're just moving it around, you're not crushing it, I'm just making it go through my hands. You don't want to make it so that you're crushing your rice. You want your rice intact. You can see all the kernels are still intact. You can see our water is even still getting clearer right now. So we'll keep washing, guys. We'll keep washing. This is the most tedious task of sushi probably right here. Just washing the rice, making sure your, your rice water is nice and clean. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to get the right consistency on your sushi rice. We'll go in here. We'll drain it off again. Come back in, mix your rice. This water's freezing cold. We're getting close there, guys. You can see it's getting less and less milky as we go. You want to be able to see the rice in the bottom of the pot. We're not quite there yet. It's still milky. You can barely see my hand. So we're going to keep going for a little bit here. I guess if you're lazy, you could probably just go to a sushi restaurant and buy some sushi rice. But uh, Chef Pookie don't play that. It's going to be a last rinse off of these. I think it's going to be clean after this. We'll see. Got to be prepared to have your hands be cold during this. You got to use cold water for this. Use anything but cold water. You start to cook your rice and you don't want that. We're getting pretty close here, guys. I'm a stickler, but you can kind of see my hand in the bottom of the pot. I like to get my rice super clean, but this is probably good where it's at right now. I'll drain off some of the water. It's not as milky as it was in the beginning. As a matter of fact, it's not really milky at all. I think it's just the water hitting the pot is doing that effect. Um, here, let's let's shut up the water for a sec. Take a look at what the uh, the rice looks like here. So with your rice just submerged under the water, you can see it, it's not all that milky. This is good consistency right here. I like this consistency. We'll drain off as much water as possible and then we'll get to cooking it. So here we go. You go slow right at the end here. That way you don't lose a ton of rice. And you can get as much water out of there as possible. All right, so that's the rice right there. Now, it's time to cook the rice. It's pretty simple. You guys just uh, gotta move your rice around until it gets clear pretty much. So we'll put the rice on and we'll go from there. We'll add some water in there, give me a sec. So every rice has a different way of cooking it. I'm just reading the directions on this one because I usually use a different brand, but they didn't have the brand that I like at uh, H-Mart this time. So just reading the instructions on this one. Um, some, some of them ask you to put more water in. Some of them ask you to put less water in. Uh, we used the entire bag, which was the entirety of the servings here. So uh, we're going to put six cups of water in here. We're going to... Bring the soaked rice to a boil and then cover with a tight fitting lid and cook for 20 minutes. So essentially just fill this up three times. You can see here the sushi is all submerged. You don't need to put any seasoning on it just yet. Bring soaked rice and water to a boil 
cover with a tight fitting lid once it's boiled and then cook for 20 minutes once it's boiled. So bring this up to a boil. So we are going on this one. We're on high. Let this bad boy boil up. All right, guys, water is almost boiling. While we wait for that, we'll, you know, get into the other stuff we're doing here. Um, gonna make some spicy sea bass, some spicy porgy. Got some porgy there. Got some sea bass there. We'll get into it here. Got my nice sushi knife here. Cut these bad boys open. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a plate. Got some porgy here. Nice pieces. I donated the rest of it. But this will be good for what we want to do. Hey guys, the water's boiling. So what we're gonna do now is cover it with a tightly fitting lid, bring it down to a simmer. And we'll go, hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes, please. Okay, 20 minutes and counting. That looks like it's simmer and stuff. But in the meantime, we'll prep our fish for sushi. Anytime making sushi, I like to rinse it under fresh water. They say when you're uh, when you're making um, when you're freezing it, don't run it under fresh water. We're making sushi, so I want to get any contaminants that may be on there off of there. So we're just giving a little rinse some fresh water put it back up there shut off that fresh water and then we're gonna give it a nice dry you do not want wet sushi little scale on there give it one more pat down some good looking stuff here some good looking stuff here and we'll do another plate for the sea bass that rice smells beautiful right now so we got sea bass coming out of the pot Give a little rinse. So what am I doing here? I'm just making sure that our fish is nice and dry. You do not want to have wet fish for your sushi. Just makes for bad consistency. We'll cut out these, uh, these little pieces over here. We'll cut those out, but everything should taste great. This looks good. It smells beautiful. We got our sushi knife over here. We are going to make some spicy stuff. Let's take our porgy. Start with the porgy. And what, what am I doing here? Chopping this up into little pieces. That way, when we make the spicy roll, you'll have a little bit of texture to it, but it won't be chunky stuff. You do not want chunky spicy stuff now my problem is when i go to the sushi restaurant the su spicy sushi rolls that they put out there well the spicy sushi rolls that they put out there are just mush it doesn't make sense to me so we're just gonna keep chopping this and chopping this and you'll see in the, the last video the porgies you know interestingly enough it's, it's cool that we catch them up here but they're almost like a tropical fish they're uh they're uh, silver, they, they, they do catch them all the way down in Florida, but they're a different type of porgy. Up here, we call them scup. Down south, they refer to them as uh, grass porgy, jolt head porgy, red porgy, stuff like that. So we're just gonna keep chopping this and chopping this and chopping this until it gets nice and into tiny little bite-sized pieces. And we'll do it with the other piece we have too. I remember porgy fishing with my dad. You catch these things by the thousands. That's why we donate a lot of them because you catch so many of them. There's just only so many you can eat at a time, but they make for very excellent sushi. Um, not a lot of people know that, but now you know. So we're gonna put that in the bowl. Put that in the bowl. Take the other piece we have. We'll just do the same exact thing. I don't like the color of this down here, so we're gonna chop this off and throw it away. Little bite-sized pieces. 
not even bite size, little, little dice on them, you know, little dice. All right, guys, so we got this all diced up here. We'll put this over to the side for a sec. We'll take uh, one of our sea basses over here and do the same exact thing with this one. All these pieces of fish are completely deboned. There's no bones in them at all. So we're gonna take nice long cuts down this way. Don't cut your finger like I almost just did. That'd be bad if I was bleeding all over the place. Now, when we were fishing for these things, you see they're, they are deep, 200, 250 feet of water. Takes close to a minute to bring them up to the surface. These are uh, fish that, that when you have a cold water fish like that, the meat is usually beautiful. And as you can see here, compared to other fish, pure white meat. It's perfect. Love it. Love it. Take this little piece over here. We're not gonna eat this, the fatty stuff. And we're just gonna keep doing the same thing we did with the porgy. Now the sea bass is a firmer fish than the porgy. I like sea bass sushi better than porgy sushi, but porgy sushi is also excellent. Making sushi is not that hard, guys. A lot of chopping, but beyond that, it's not very hard. Especially after you like, share, and subscribe to this video. Chef Pookie son. I don't have quite as fast knife skills as I like to. Kind of a uh, downfall of me. It takes me a long time to cut things. Whereas like, normally like, oh. I can't do that. I guess I can. I'm doing it right now. There you go. I don't know if I'm actually chopping or anything or I'm just smushing it down, but look, we're growing together. Now I'm chopping like a chef. There we go. I don't know if I'm really chopping like a chef, but that looks like good consistency. Throw that in a bowl. I'm gonna finish prepping the sea bass just so we have the uh, pieces we need for sushi later. See this stuff right here? Take that out of there. Just take this outer edge off. So for the sushis, you want nice long pieces. That way they fit in the roll nicely. So like that, that should be good. Might have brought a lot of fish with me. We'll see. See this stuff right here? This outer edge? It's got too much fat in it, too much intramuscular stuff going on. Throw that out. Five minutes left on the sushi rice. And then once, once the sushi rice is done with that 20 minutes, you take it off and you let it steam, I guess. So the instructions, huh? So. All right, guys. So then we have our spicy porgy starter here. We have our spicy uh, sea bass starter here. Uh, there's a little bit other stuff I like to throw in with the uh, spicy stuff. So I'm gonna save some of these chives, but I like to throw chop chives in with them. We're gonna save those for some of the rolls. Right now, we'll take some of these chives. We'll throw them in. I think it adds a nice little flavor to it, so. That'll be for one batch. It's good there. What's your guys' favorite sushi? Let me know in the comments. Where's your go-to spot? I like, uh, there's this place down the block from my house called Osaka that I normally go to. But uh, I also like, for all you can eat, I like uh, Watawa, I like Sushi Republic in uh, New Hyde Park. Our sushi, oh, look at that. Our sushi is, uh, you take the top off of them. Just let it steam now, apparently. Oh, remove from heat and keep covered. I did that wrong, huh? Should keep that covered for 10 minutes. In the meantime, we'll construct the spicy sea bass and porgy. Take some of our sauces that we need. So we got to put in the spicy, the spicy mixtures. We got some shoyu, 
We obviously got sriracha mayo. Sometimes you can, I can't even open sure. Sometimes you can make your own sriracha mayo, but uh, I didn't do that because I'm lazy. So I don't like going too heavy with the, uh, the mayo. I think it gives it an off taste. Put a little bit in, but not too much. Like right there. Just want a little bit more, because a little bit more. That should be it. We'll give it a taste test in a little bit, see what it tastes like, but uh, some people don't use this stuff, but I love it. It's uh, sesame oil. Very strong stuff, so you gotta be sparing with it. But uh, it's got a nice nutty flavor to it. Really adds some boldness to it. And I, what brand do you choose? It doesn't matter to me. I just, when I go to H Mart, I see what looks good. It's a product of Japan, so it must be good, right? So I'm just gonna take a little dabble of that, a little more in this one, a little dibble dabble, and a little bit more. That's good. Oh, you can smell it. It's just pure, pure nuttiness. That's what she said. Um, got my little chopsticks here to mix them in a little bit. So I like to take a little bit of breadcrumbs, panko Japanese style. A little bit of that. There you go. Looks good there. Hey, there you go. And if you're really adventurous, this is uh, wasabi powder. We'll put a little pinch of wasabi powder in each one. And this is what, uh, when you get wasabi at the sushi restaurant, you'll see in a little bit. This is what they make the, uh, the wasabi out of. And last but not least, we will add in some shoyu. And as you go along, we'll now mix this up. <laughs> White boy with chopsticks, uh-oh. And we'll just give this a mix. See what we got going here. We need to add one thing or another. Maybe a little more mayo to thicken it up a little bit. You don't want your spicy stuff to be too, uh, too wet. Little bit of mayo. Not a ton. Just a squeezel. As you go along, you taste test. It was a little tasty taste. Y'all, that's perfect. Damn, I'm good. Let's do the same mixy mix with the uh, sea bass. Wow, that's really good. Put this over on the side. A feeling I'm going to need more panko and more mayo in this one, but we'll see. Ooh, that wasabi kicks you at the end. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna add in a little more panko and a little more mayo. <laughs> That is looking right, guys. I smell the, the, the sesame oil in there is just beautiful. So, take our separate chopsticks that we have over here so we can taste test these. Yup. That's perfect, too. All right, guys. Well, stay tuned. We gotta wait for our rice to cool down before you can uh, make sushi. So, there's that. Ooh, rice is done. So, uh, I'm gonna shut that off. That's an annoying sound, huh? So rice is done. What does that mean? It means we are going to season our sushi rice now. What that means is you take some rice vinegar and you basically put it on the rice and you taste it until it tastes like sushi rice. <laughs> I mean, isn't it, I, I'm sure there's an exact science to this, but if you learn what it is, let me know because I just, I put rice vinegar in there and I taste it until it tastes good. So this is off the heat now. It looks cooked. Hope it's good. You also want to um, give your rice a taste once it is cooked like this, just to make sure that the texture is right. 
consistency is perfect. I made a lot of rice. <laughs> so I know that uh, there's a lot of rice here. So what the sushi guys do is they do this. I don't know what it really does, but I'm sure it does something. Fanning it out. I guess uh, once you, you get your vinegar in there, you give it a little stir. Don't want to stir it too much because then you break the grains. I watch so many sushi cooking shows. I could probably do one of those shows myself. I am doing one of those shows right now. How about that? And think about that one. So you can smell the vinegar when you're doing this, but I know that I'm going to need a lot of vinegar on this one because there's a lot of sushi rice here. So we're going to take this, scrape this off. I'm not even going to taste it yet. So I know it's not right yet. I'm just going to take the rest of this and just. And then we're going to take one more. You can see the steam coming off this. You cannot make sushi until this cools down. So there's probably another 30 minutes before you can actually start rolling. But we're going to give it a taste here in a minute. See if the, the vinegarness is good yet. That's a weird word, vinegarness. And take a little tasty. More, more vinegar, more vinegar. It's very bland rice right now. Yep, that's good. So, rice is done. Uh, you gotta wait for it to cool down for a while before you can actually start making sushi. Once it cools down, I'll catch back up with you. In the meantime, while that's cooling down, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll slice my avocados, I'll slice my mangoes, and slice whatever else needs to be sliced up, and uh, we'll get everything ready. So, that is the sushi rice. That's as, pretty much as easy as it goes. But you want, uh, a little bit of a tart tart taste to it from the rice wine. You don't want it overly tart because then your rice will taste disgusting, but I, I don't know why it takes some sushi chefs like 30 years to do this, because uh, it takes me like five minutes to do it. So uh, yeah, that's our, that's our sushi rice. Catch it back up with you in a little bit. All right guys, so while I'm waiting for the um, rice to cool down, for some reason when you get your your nori, it's a little bit longer than it should be. Um, so we're gonna pull out a bunch of sheets of nori. We're gonna trim them down a little bit here. That way, your sushi isn't as crazy and as big as it should be. So, generally speaking, you want your nori to be right about there. That should be good. Did I cut all the way through? My chef. Oh baby, look at that. Little nifty tip here. Uh, a lot of people like to use saran wrap for their uh, sushi roller. I just use a plastic bag. Fits right in there perfectly. Doesn't stick to your hands. It's perfect. So, um, something else to keep in mind. You like to keep a towel, kitchen towel, next to you. Um, dry off your hands, clean off your hands, clean off your knife. Another thing that you need to have with you is a um, something to dip your knife in and out of. Um, that way it doesn't stick to the sushi when you're cutting it. So, um, and one little bowl of water to dip your hands in and out of because you need to keep your hands um, nice and, and wet while you're doing this. So, all right guys, well, we're gonna wait for the uh, rice to cool down a little bit more and then we'll get to rolling. All right guys, so this is how we roll. Uh, you take a piece of nori, put it down. You're gonna take your hands, and you're gonna make your hands, tips of your fingers wet, okay? You take a little bit of su sushi rice, and you're gonna take it, and you're gonna push it out. The hands are a little sticky. You gotta keep the hands wet. And we're just gonna push the rice out, make sure it's nice and even. Nose may not look pretty right now, but it will in a second. <laughs> we'll push it 
push it out. Make sure you got it up to the edges. My hands need to stay wet. Because, see, it's already sticking to my hands. You want to push it out. Make sure it's nice to the edges. Make sure it's not clumped up anywhere. Then, we're going to take some sesame seeds. Give it a little... And you're gonna take it, and in one full swoop, you're gonna just flip it over like that. Doesn't need to be straight or anything like that. So now we're gonna take some fish, and we're just gonna go a little bit of porgy right in here. This one we'll do plain, the first one. Just put it in there like that. And then you take your, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Sushi rolling device here. You're gonna roll it up. Very easy to do. For some reason, guys, battery died in the middle of that. So, just gonna keep rolling here. See how this comes out. But basically, just wanna keep rolling until you get the, the nice shape of it. And it doesn't look beautiful on this one, but we'll get it better. So, you got our sushi here. Doesn't look great, but it looks okay. And you wanna take your knife and dip it in there. And then, just halfway. Keep your knife nice and wet. Halfway. Keep your knife nice and wet. Halfway. Keep your knife nice and wet. Halfway. Wet. Wet. And these end pieces, go to the chef. Mmm. That tastes good. I'm packaging up the sushi right now. It's going to my buddy who uh, had a house fire. And uh, he spent a New Year's in a hotel. So we're gonna bring him some sushi. Let's do it again. So, like we did before with the last one, keep our hands nice and wet. That way it does not stick to our hands. And we'll take a bigger ball here. You learn how to do better commentary on these videos. I'm not very good at that shit. But, uh, See here, we're gonna do the same exact thing, but I think I'm gonna add some avocado to this one. So, just do that. Add some that shit in there. Take your seaweed, and in one swoop, boom. Take a nice little sprig of avocados. Avocado. It's an avocado. Like I said before, when you're rolling it, you just wanna kinda take it like this, push all your ingredients inside of there, and just keep pulling on it. Keep pulling on the, the rolling mat. You go like that, push it in, keep pulling on it, push it in, keep rolling on your mat, push it in, and I think when you get to that point, it's all rolled up, but uh, you wanna keep going with it. Make sure it's got a nice cylindrical form. That's what the sushi is supposed to look like. I don't know how sushi chefs keep their, their like areas neat. It doesn't make sense to me. Come on. Some of a bit fell apart. Gotta taste it then. Oh yeah, how come? Could be a little tighter, not gonna lie. Looks much better on Instagram when I post it, huh? That one could definitely have been held a little bit better. This one's gonna go in my mouth. I know I said to uh, 
cut the nori sheets, but I didn't like what was happening there. So I'm gonna go back to the roots of how I used to make sushi before I cut it. The cutting is only I saw other sushi chefs doing. So I was like, maybe I should cut it, but that wasn't a good idea. I don't think we're gonna say. Let's flip it, all right. One, two, three. Flip, 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 flip Adelphia. That's a massive roll. <laughs> it's a big chunk of rolls. Actually, you know what? Let's show you something different. But an inside out roll. This one, it's more Korean style, but it'll work this way too. You don't have to flip it every time. That is how you do the cheating way. If you don't want to deal with the rice going everywhere. I think it's a bazooka. I gotta learn how to get these things smaller. I had it smaller for a while, but I haven't cooked sushi in a very long time. That one came out nice. All right, guys, here we have it, the sushi. You got the sea bass over there, it's spicy. You got the sea bass over here, a little bit of porgy over there. Gonna bring it to my friend a little bit, but guys, as always, like, share, subscribe. Love you guys. Remember to stay happy and smile.